first time in official capacity, and so basically what I'm just going to do is just give an update. My name is Ajmal Binded, Douglas County DMC Coordinator, and I'm just going to just highlight some of the things I've worked on since I started in um, about seven months ago. And basically, you have a handout this is that, but I've had an opportunity to visit about with 25 different individuals in uh, various capacities to talk about what some of the challenges we face in Douglas County related to DMC. And basically, their summation was personalities, data, and civility. And again, I understand how important that is for us to try to bring our worlds together. The second thing that I also wanted to highlight is that I was working with uh, Kerry Davis, a grant coordinator. We got an additional $400,000 from the federal government to help us do DMC work in Douglas County. And again, it will give an opportunity for us to kind of expand. Uh, in terms of doing various things in our community. Uh, we also got about 10 letters of support uh, from various entities, and some have not written letters of support for this issue to help us go forward because people in this community see how important it is to address disproportionate minority contact in our community. I've been attending a number of OIS meetings as well as criminal justice meetings and so on, and as a lifelong resident uh, in this community, I'm surprised at some of the things that take place and some of the silos that exist. Again, I say that because some things I've seen, I see it from the eyes of a long-term resident, but also as an outsider, that many of the issues that we face is because we have not had more community stakeholders involved in these conversations. Uh, Sometimes we do not, we're not able to mystify some of the concepts and issues that can help our community come forward. Now, some of you who know me know that I'm very much strongly in favor of us pushing issues related to diversity, inclusiveness, as well as dealing with issues related to race. And what I keep running into is in some of these meetings, we don't have the very people, the very people that we talk about are community members at the table. So one of the things we're looking at is how can we do with that? I'm in the process now working with Creighton University, and we don't have this locked in Metro and some other folks, and particularly faith-based organizations, to talk about issues related to race and so on. And one of the terms that we're looking at is how do we deal with Douglas County difficult dialogue, which is based upon how do you bring people to these conversations to address uh, issues related to our juvenile justice system, particularly as it relates to race and so on. I've also been able to uh, participate in a number of forums and events and so on, and I've also use a bit of uh, social capital to do that. Now let me backtrack a little bit. Uh, Mrs. Charlotte, a late friend of my mother, used to use the term that we cannot say I writers. We can't say I too many times in a sense, but it's really we. And she says when you see people do that so often, they oftentimes don't think of community. So part of what I'm also about is how do we work with other people? How do we get people in our community to the table? And one of them is we just recently had an event related to gentrification. I've also participated with uh, different organizations with uh, healing justice. The basis of film about restorative justice. A lot of us will agree that many, and I heard today many times that we have to approach young people in a different fashion. And so with this whole DMC effort and drive is we've got to bring more volunteers to our table. We've got to bring people who are closer to the problem to the problem to help solve it. And I'm somewhat surprised that too often we have not done that in government and in public and private organizations. So one of the goals that I'd like to do is do a lot more convening and bringing people in who have great ideas. For example, a few weeks ago we had a showing of the film at uh, Clare Memorial Church. We had about 66 individuals at the meeting. 44 individuals signed up to get involved in more activities. And one of the things I've learned over the years from doing table talk and engaging people in their homes and so on, is that we oftentimes don't give people an opportunity to participate in our governments and our public and private nonprofits. Some of you know that I worked for 25 years in Catholic Charities, and one of my greatest uh, achievements, I would say, is community forums or more than anything, help them develop advisory community and advisory groups and work with people in the community, as we call them the grass tops. Because as I listen to the conversation today, part of what we got to do is bring more people to this table. Uh, the other thing that I think we're going to look at is how do we have more dinners? I want to see if we can approach other people to help us get some funding to deal with conversations around the table about issues that we call Douglas County Difficult Dialogues. When I was participating in Omaha Table Talks for years, I've had a chance to visit probably at least 60 to 80 different homes over the years. And one of the things that I noticed from many of the families and individuals who invited us to their homes as individuals and collectively is how open people are to you when you come to the dinner table and how they want to really talk about these issues. So that's going to be a big component. The other thing we have planned is we're going to schedule a film. And this is going to be, I mean, a conversation or uh, an event, a community forum at First United Methodist Church. And by the way, we're going to have different locations for some of these events, north, south, east, and west. But we're going to talk about the intersectionality of disproportionate minority confinement, contact, and so on. 
And how do we talk about judges, law enforcement, and so on in a very constructive manner? I shared the story when I started this job. For many years, I've held many community forums uh, in both North and South Omaha working at Catholic Charities. And my first time walking into the police department administrative building was when I got this job, even though I've hold, held many uh, forms for police chiefs and so on. But I never been invited to their buildings that I help pay taxes for. So one of the things we want to look at is how do we get law enforcement to have conversations with individuals to talk about some of the issues that we face. And as I heard many of the speakers talk about today, demystify and deconstruct the elephant on the table. Douglas County is not different from any other place in the sense, but why do we have a high percentage of folks who are in some of our criminal justice systems they should not be in because of mental health issues? The other thing that we have planned over here is that major focus areas. I, as I was approached in doing this job and working with different entities, I found out that we do not have one study in the last four or five years that deal with race and the juvenile justice or the criminal justice system written by local academicians. How is that possible? We have two major departments in our universities that deal with criminal justice. Again, are these populations we're studying? So one of the things we're looking at with DMC is how do you bring the academic community into some of these activities? We need to have community forums. We need to have listening sessions. We also need to have uh, conferences and workshops and symposium. You name it. We need to have that in this area. And so one of the things we want to try to do is bring those worlds together to do that because there's a lot of wasted energy in our community. Uh, dealing with some of these issues uh, in a different kind of way. So we want to bring some local academicians as well as a police department, law enforcement, and somebody says, don't forget Douglas County Sheriff's Department in this whole process also. Uh, but I think as we go forward, one of the things that I would like to do is be open to the constructive feedback. And one of the things I've learned a long time ago, that when you do things on behalf of the public, you need to ask their input. There have been a number of events that I've attended where people do a great job to a point, but they never really asked the participants what they really thought about it. So everything that I'd like to be about as we deal with DMC is, what does the community, the participants, and the people want? Uh, I would hope that as we go forward, again, this is, I've not been in, the, in this capacity for, so long, for, for a long time at this point, but I'd like to be able to be able to move on a dime when we are addressing some of these important issues. So part of what I've shared today is just kind of an update uh, and then the last thing I think is probably the most important, we, I'm going to go to Georgetown with a delegation, about eight different individuals. Commissioner Rogers is also going to go with us. But we're going to Georgetown for a certification program on DMC. We're going to learn hopefully a lot, but what I heard from the individuals is that they want us to focus on one project for us as a group. I came in with this naive mentality that we come back and do four or five projects and say, no, you got to do one for the most part. But there will also be other opportunities and partnerships that we can work on to help deal with this issue. Because when you walk in a room or you're in a meeting and someone sees the numbers or they know the numbers are disproportionately people of color, we ask the question, how is that so? And sometimes I find it very difficult when I'm sitting in a room to keep quiet when it's obvious there's an elephant that we need to deconstruct on that table, particularly when it deals with particular racial groups. We have to continue to challenge ourselves and be open to feedback, constructive and so on, because again, you have to develop a little bit thicker skin than some of the things I've encountered. And then what is probably the most sad thing in terms of doing this job are some of the people who want to talk off the record when they're doing public business. We work for the public. We work for the people in the community. I'm an employee of the, of the community of the government in a sense. So again, as Robert Greenleaf talks about the leader's service, how can I be of service to you? The late Rap Afrodocker, who was a great friend of Martin Luther King, said, it is not about how many servants you have, but it's how many people you serve. Commissioner Rogers just loves to use metaphors about sports. I love to use metaphors about African culture and proverbs. But that proverb that I remember so well is that the eye cannot see itself. And that we're about helping our community. It goes back to the notion that strong people don't need strong leaders. Thank you. Commissioner Works. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Ajamal. And I think we need to have a, a discussion, though, because I'm all for going to the community and having conversations, but when you were brought up, <coughs> the issue was about our system. Right. And so we need to get the focus, main focus, because we know we have an issue. Nobody's denying that. Nobody's trying to hide from that. We have a DNC issue. And that's been clear for a number of years. The problem was, is where is it? Why do we have that problem? And so the focus, in my opinion, is not 
is yes, go to the community, you can have all the talks you want with the community, but it still comes back to where in our system are we failing? Right. And those are, I think, the harder conversations. And we need to have that hard conversation that says it was X department, X office that's not doing this or not doing that, and we need some help with this. So I think in your uh, goals, that needs to be moved up to be number one. Because we can't fix something that we don't know where the issue is. Right. And that's on those system points. Um, there was a DMC, um, you didn't list it, there was a DMC um, initiative that Commissioner Rogers and I attended that was put on by Reconnecting and the Black Studies um, that again, here you talk about history, it was the 30 year anniversary of DMC and uh, we're still here talking about it. And so for, for me, I need a plan that says, yes, we can go out and talk to the community and have discussions, but I want a plan for Douglas County and our system points that we're gonna fix. Where are they, where are the problems? Why is it a problem and how are we gonna fix it? So we, we probably need to have a little bit more conversation as you uh, craft your um, right. my, my re reaction is I didn't even write the DMC conference, I mean the, the uh, Georgetown one there. Basically this is just an update on some of the things, high points, and again that event happened uh, within the past couple of weeks, but part of the thing that I'm looking at is, uh, and again, there's not a sequence in this, it's just more of an update, but I do think as we come back from Georgetown and we do some other activities, we're going to make it hope a little bit more in terms of priorities and where we're going to go. But let me raise a point that I think is probably the best of what, what I'm really trying to summarize is. In this community, the very stakeholders that who are impacted by these systems are oftentimes not brought to the table. And I'm gonna do a better job of doing that because I'll use one quick example. And I share this more of a personal, but I have to be careful. 14 kids, 10 of some college degrees, and I've only been twice invited to the public schools to talk about how we got through 12 years of schooling and elsewhere. And part of what I want to argue is that those who are closer to the problem, I got to figure out how to bring them into it. Because one of the things that I notice it's too often, those of us as professionals or those who earn a living off of systems, we oftentimes don't harvest the skill set of those who survive those systems. And I'd like to do a little bit better job of that because I have a history of our systems not doing that. So I'm not, this is not comprehensive in a sense, but I'm hoping this is a start for us to do these conversations because one of the things that I've learned over the years is that a lot of folks we do a lot of good work, and we just haven't got their input in to deal with some of those issues. But I agree with you that yes, we got to go upstream and deal with the issues that we know we already they're right in our face. Well, our our friend Levon Stennis has always said those closest to the problem come up with the best solutions, <laughs> and so you are absolutely right. Um, but again, I think that our conversation, or our focus, needs to be more on our system. Right. That's what that's what needs to be. Right, I agree. Thank you. Future conversations on that. Okay. Thank you, Ajman. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Well, item G, which is human resources, and item one is the personnel report. Oh. oh. Well, what do you want to come on? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and follow up with my name again. Yep. Carmen Allison, Junior 2912 on 26th Street. Um, referring to. Uh, Commissioner Gordon's question about the cause and effect of this problem. Um, and it goes back to the subject with the mental health. The cause and the effect of this problem is historical. The majority of African Americans' mental illness is based upon post traumatic slavery disorder. The essence of that comes out in racism. The main problem in this situation is the justice system. That's why they remove themselves from any responsibility for providing, providing any kind of data. And it was very specific about the community taking care of their own problems and the justice system will do what it's supposed to do, and that is arrest and maintain. 
been charged by the justice system has been placed where Mr. Bynum said we have to take care of our problem, and that's really where we should too. Because of the mental health situation, a lot of it is uh, convenient for a lot of us um, because our other conveniences are minuscule, um, has caused us a serious issue, not wanting to confront the problem. The justice system says that they're not going to provide the data of which most coordinators of DMC operations were based in to get or to work with organizations within the community that would provide that. We need to know why a child who gets picked up for whatever charge gets one sentence and another child who's picked up the same thing gets a different kind of sentence. We're not going to know that unless we're at the point of contact. And historically, we haven't had enough of our own people, if not our own police departments, in our own community. The essence of the problem lies within the system. We are the victims of it. We have to cure our problems in-house. Just like you need to cure your problems in-house. 